Hi, welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In this video, we will upgrade this printer to a direct drive extruder. You can do the same upgrades to an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, CR10, or any other FDM 3D printers. One of the main benefits of the direct extruder is that it shortens the distance between the extruder and the hot end. This long Bowden tube is no longer required, so it provides more accurate extrusion and retractions. But the disadvantage is that it will add more weight on the x-axis. It may not be able to print as fast as the Bowden tube setup, but normally if we're just printing about 50 to 60 millimeters, it won't make any significant difference. It's a pretty simple upgrade. We just need to print a mount and move the stepper motor and the extruder from the original position to the top of the hot end. Then we will cut a very short piece of Bowden tube to connect the extruder with the hot end. This will become a direct drive extruder printer. Let's start with printing the mount. You can go to Thingiverse and search for Ender 3 Direct Drive and download the model you like. If you are using the stock fan cover and hot end, I would suggest downloading a simple one, which should fit nicely, as the only purpose of this mount is to provide a space for you to mount the stepper motor and the extruder. Some designs may be too complicated and add more weight to the x-axis. I prefer simple and lightweight designs. You can use any filament, PLA, PETG, or ABS to print it. Okay, let's print it out. I am going to use ABS. Removing the support can be very troublesome since it takes a while. You also have to do this slowly to avoid damaging the model itself. We will now unload the filament. We will now remove the extruder and stepper motor. The stock extruder is quite simple, but if you aren't familiar with the structure of an extruder, you can take a picture before you start. Take these two pieces and put them exactly where they were on the 3D printed mount. Next, we need to remove the Bowden tube from the hot end. Heat up the hot end to 200 degrees, or it can't be removed easily. We can now turn off the printer and let it cool down. We still need to cut a short piece of Bowden tube to connect the extruder with the hot end. The cut needs to be as straight as possible to make sure you have good contact with the hot end and the nozzle. First, we can divide the total length of the tube required into three parts. The first part is how deep we need to go into the extruder. Take the PTFE tube and push it all the way to the end. We can use a marker to mark a line here. Measure the number and write it down. Let's loosen these two screws, which mount the pulley wheels. Then we need to put the mount on the support plate and measure the distance between these two couples. Measure the length and write it down. Finally, we need to know how deep it goes inside the hot end. Heat up the hot end to 200 degrees. Push the tube inside, mark it, Measure the distance and write it down. The total length required is A plus B plus C, which is 70 millimeters. Put everything together. If it fits perfectly, we can just tighten the screw. If not, we can cut another millimeter. After one to two tries, you should get a perfect distance like this.
we can now connect the stepper motor back. You may need a longer cable. You need to make sure it can reach the maximum height and the far side of the x-axis. If your cable is too short, you need to replace it with a longer one or use an extension. Okay, the direct extruder upgrade is done. We don't need to change anything except for the retraction settings in your slicer. Let's use Cura as an example. Normally, the Bowden tube setup requires a retraction of 5 mm and 50 mm per second. For direct drive, it should only need 1 to 3 mm and 30 to 50 mm per second. It depends on your extruder and filament. You can find the perfect number within these settings. Let's try to print a test cube and see if everything is working fine. It looks pretty good, and I think this upgrade is pretty successful. But there is still a problem. Since we put the stepper motor and the extruder on top of the x-axis, you can see when the x-axis travels to the far side, it drops a little bit and moves too close to the print surface. The only way to fix this is to install a dual Z axis. After this upgrade, I also tried to purchase an Ender 3 Direct Extruder Upgrade Kit. It's an amazing deal. For $33, you can get a stepper motor, hot end, two fans, a fan cover, support plate with three new pulley wheels, a thermistor, a heat cartilage, and a new set of wires. Installing this kit is pretty straightforward. It looks much nicer than my own DIY version, but as you can see, the weight of this direct extruder kit is almost 550 grams. So it won't change anything since the fundamental cause of the problem is lack of support on the other side of the gantry. I will make another video to install a dual Z axis. If you buy a dual Z axis kit, it should cost around $50, but I have a DIY solution. I will make another video for this upgrade and post it next week. That's it for this video. All information in this video is gathered from my experience with 3D printers, so if there's anything incorrect or could be improved on, feel free to let me know in the comments so we can bring better videos to you in the future. Hi, I'm Aurora Lung. We're supposed to say welcome back first. It may not be... It may... <laughs> if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button to support Aurora Tech Channel. See you in the next video.